Act 4, Scene 2. Enter Macduff's wife, her son, and Ross. Remember, Macbeth has just said he plans to kill everyone who's at Macduff's castle. What had he done to make him fly the land? Lady Macduff is asking about her husband, right? Why'd he leave? She's feeling suspicious. You must have patience, madam. Ross is just a friend trying to calm down Lady Macbeth. Well, Macduff had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear that made him leave your home. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babies, his mansion, and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive, the smallest of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love, as little is the wisdom, where the flight so runs against all reason. It makes no sense that he left us. Even the little wren will fight against a huge owl to save her babies. And my husband, Macduff, has, let, has left. It makes no sense. Ross tries to calm her down. My dearest cousin, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he's noble, he's wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further. But cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves, how when we accuse our own family of being traitors. When we hold rumor from what we fear and yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I'm so much a fool. Should I stay longer? It would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. And Ross exits. Asura, now she's talking to her son, your father's dead, and what will you do now? How will you live? He's not actually dead, right? Lady Macbeth, Macduff is just exaggerating. As birds do, mother. What with worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou'st never fear the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gin, how you trust too much. Why should I, mother? Poor birds, they're not set for. My father's not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. Now how wilt thou do for a father? Well, nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Well, then you'll buy him to sell again. Huh? Why are you, you know, the son is assuming, you know, you're so quick to just forget my own dad. What, what the, what's, what, what you doing? Thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Ay, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so. Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Well, who must hang them? Why, the, the honest men. Well, then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang up them. Now, God help thee, poor monkey. But how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor prattler, how thou talkest. Enter a messenger. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I'm not going to hurt you at all. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage, I don't mean to scare you, but uh, to do worse to you were fell cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. The messenger exits, and the messenger just came and said, hey, you got to get out of here. Apparently this messenger knows what Macbeth's plans are. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm, but I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. People applaud it when you do harm. To do good, sometime accounted dangerous folly. We could say this is the theme of the play almost. Like Lady Macduff is saying, I remember I'm living in this world where people do evil, even though they're not supposed to. They know they're not supposed to. Why do people do evil even though they're not supposed to? But, but they do, and I'm remembering that's the world I live in. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have done no harm? Enter the murderers. What are these faces? Who are these people? Where is your husband? 
I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou may find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shaggered villain. What, you egg? And stabs him. Young fry of treachery, and the son says, He has killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. Lady Macduff exits, crying murder, followed by the murderers bearing the son's body, and we're left to assume the rest of them are killed. Scene three, enter Malcolm and Macduff. Remember, Malcolm is heir to the throne, Duncan's son. He fled to England to save himself. Let us seek some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Huh? Let's just go cry. <laughs> Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, bestride our downfall and birth them. Let, let's be men. <laughs> let's not cry. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland, and yelled out like syllable of dolor. Not Scotland is in shambles. Every morning there are new widows because men are killed at night because there's battle everywhere. Uh, Scotland is just falling apart under the rule of the tyrant Macbeth. What I believe, I'll wail. What no, believe. And what I can redress, redress means correct. I shall find the time to friend. I will. What you have spoke, it may be so. Uh, you might be telling me the truth, perchance. This tyrant, Macbeth, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I'm young. But something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. Right. Malcolm isn't trusting Macduff here. Um, he's saying, you know, I, I, I don't know, you were used to, you were loyal to Macbeth at one time. I don't know if I can trust you, or are you just going to go back and give news to Macbeth? I don't know. And Macduff tries to defend himself. I'm not treacherous, but Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. How You may be a good man, but the king, an imperial charge, the king may have ordered you to do something, and you might be doing it. But I shall crave your pardon, so please forgive me. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. I don't know if I can trust you. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Uh, the brightest angel. Satan was the brightest angel, and he was kicked out of heaven. He used to be loyal to God, but he was kicked out of heaven because he went against God. And so Malcolm is saying, I just don't know if I can trust you. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. Oh, I have lost my hopes. But per perchance, even there where I did find my doubts, why in that rawness left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong knots of love, without leave-taking? Why'd you leave your family behind? I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. I don't think I'm dishonoring you, I'm just protecting myself. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny, lay thou thy basis, sure, for goodness dare not check thee. Huh? Scotland is just going to crumble. Wear thou thy wrongs. The title is a feared. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkest for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Well, I, I wouldn't join with Macbeth for, for the whole kingdom that Macbeth has. I wouldn't do it. Oh, be not offended. I speak not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. Now Scotland is in rough shape, I know that. I think withal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands, with lots of people here in England ready to help me get my country back. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than I had before, more suffer, and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. Here, Malcolm is saying, I do have people here in England who are going to help me come up with an army. When I do defeat Macbeth, the poor country of Scotland is going to have more problems with me as the king. And Macduff is confused by this because Malcolm is a good person. And so Macduff says, well, what should he be? You know, what kind of problems would you bring? It's myself, I mean, and whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow. Uh, compared to me, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. 
Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. Why, I grant Macbeth bloody, luxurious, avaricious, avaricious means you're greedy, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, ah, evil, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none, in my voluptuousness. Uh, voluptuousness means uh, my lust, my drive for sex. Mm -hmm. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust, huh? the well of my lust. And my desire, all continent impediments would overbear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such a one to reign. You don't want me there. I'm just going to take advantage of all your women, Malcolm is saying. What? <laughs> Macduff is surprised by this, but he's going to be like, I'll oh, be okay. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. How this could be a problem. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You can convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty and yet seem cold. The time you may so hoodwink. Hoodwink means trick, huh? You can trick the country. You can kind of do this privately and have all these women privately and the country doesn't need to know about it. We have willing dames enough there not can there cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. I, we should have enough women for you. Mm. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles of their lands, desire his jewels and this other's house. Not only do I uh, do I have this addiction to sex, uh, but I'm greedy too. And I would take all the land and all the jewels. You really don't want me to be king, is what Malcolm is saying. And my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. Oh, this avarice, this greediness sticks deeper. It grows with more evil root than summer seeming lust. And it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear. Scotland hath foisions, they have treasure, to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable with other graces weighed. Huh? We can get you what you need, come on. Mm, but I have none, huh? I have no graces, I have no good qualities. The king becoming graces like justice and verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime, acting in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth, I would destroy the country. Macduff is losing hope. Oh, Scotland, Scotland. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. Oh, nation miserable, with an untitled tyrant, bloody, sceptered, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Huh? When will Scotland be whole again? Since that the truest issue of thy throne, Malcolm, the heir to the throne, by his own interdiction stands accursed and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father, Duncan, was a most sainted king. The queen that bore you, Malcolm, was oftener upon her knees than on her feet. How she was always praying. She was such a good queen. She died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These evils thou repeatest upon thyself hath banished me from Scotland. Oh, my breast, thy hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Mm. So here Malcolm says, I was just testing you. I was just testing you and, and finding out if I could trust you and, and, and you've passed the test. I can trust you. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from overcredulous haste. Huh? Many guys have come to me before and tried to convince me to go, go against Macbeth, and then I haven't done it, but now I know I can trust you. And now Malcolm is going to go on with his plan because he does have one, and we'll continue reading in the next podcast.